Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Vintage Guitar Legacies, a mini-series delving into the history, quirks, and sounds of some very special guitars. My name is Sarah James, and today we will be taking a look at a 1938 Triple Lot Acoustic Martin guitar. <laughs> What makes this guitar very special to me is that it came to me uh, in a meaningful time in my life. I was taking some personal time just to sort things out and happened to be in a convent in um, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, uh, where I could stay and be undisturbed for a while. Walking around the grounds, I noticed uh, there was a storage closet and <laughs> being a little bit nosy, I opened the door and I saw this guitar case and there's not a guitar within my eyesight that I wouldn't be drawn to. So I pulled the case out the next day and I found this guitar, surprisingly, uh, a Martin, which was shocked me. I really didn't know much about the model at the time, but when I picked it up, the the, um, the bridge was popping off and there were some other things that were wrong with it. So the next day I approached the uh, sisters in, uh, in the uh, facility and I said, hey, I'd like to buy that from you. And they said, oh honey, you don't have to buy that. Why don't you just take it home and make it happy? <laughs> So um, the next step was to get it into the hands of a great luthier, um, whereupon he looked at it and just paled when we realized it was a 1938 uh, Triple Lot 28 guitar made by Martin uh, in Nazareth, Pennsylvania. Pretty much considered by many as a holy grail, one of the holy grails of the Martin Guitar Company. Well, we put uh, steel strings on it. Uh, there's some debate about this. And my research and my opinion is that uh, uh, phosphor bronze or bronze strings were not available at the time. So this guitar will likely have come with either silk wound uh, or metal strings. The sound of this guitar is unlike anything I've, I've ever heard. In fact, people who have played it still talk about it when it was in the, in the store and in, in the uh, luthier shop. And once we got it back to life and back together again, it, it's, it's just remarkable. The wood on this guitar is, is uh, the back and sides are a heartwood rosewood, which today is just not available for a lot of reasons. And what makes it, gives the sonic signature of this instrument, it's, its personality. I don't know if you can see it or not, but this, the wood has a little bit of a yellowish cast to it, unlike the reddish redwoods that we find today, because it was heartwood, the center, kind of the center cutter, the fillet. Top is, is this beautiful, tight-grained um, spruce. Uh, the original pickguard. There was very, very little play wear on this guitar at the, when I received it. Um, a little bit here from some pick wear, uh, but remarkably in great, great condition. I like to say that, um, you know, people ask me, well, how did you find that? And I said, well, to me, a guitar like this finds me. I feel that uh, it needed, it wanted help. It was looking for somebody to help it because for me, guitars, instruments have personalities. There, there are maybe to some, they're living things. So it's a joy for me to own this guitar. It'll probably end up uh, in a musical history museum somewhere at some point. My role is to take care of it and safeguard it uh, through the, the time that I am, I'm allowed to have it. So playing this um, guitar, we will have a demonstration. My good friend Aaron Howard will be joining me and giving us a demonstration of the uh, versatility and the sound of this amazing guitar.
Aaron, hey, thanks so much for stopping by and um, thanks for having me. Playing that beautiful guitar. Um, you've played a lot of guitars in in your career, and I'm just wondering some of your first impressions about this. Okay, so. I have to admit something, I played this guitar two years ago and I didn't know I was going to play this guitar today. And when I played it two years ago, I don't know if you remember this, I told you this is the best guitar I've ever played. Mm. And I don't think my mind has changed about that. Really? Like of all, I mean, you yeah. have some really beautiful guitars and mm -hmm. I've played a l several of them. Um, all of your favorites and this is my favorite guitar. It's perfectly balanced. Um, in the demo I played, it goes from real soft, you know, to really loud. And some guitars are really easy to overplay. Like as soon as you go, they get too mid rangey and mm -hmm. harsh. And this mm -hmm. just all the way from the quietest little. In terms of just the sound of this one, it's balanced all the way, like from the low end to the high end. And maybe yeah. it's a little bit scooped in the mids, which I, that's the, that's a sound that I like mm -hmm. on a guitar. Um, but like in such a smooth, sweet way, I just, I think it's just the, it must be the age because mm -hmm. I've played so many guitars and I don't think I've ever played an acoustic mm -hmm. guitar. That's just this sweet and wonderful in a room. Mm -hmm. This is just amazing. Is there something about a Martin guitar that is distinctive? from other instruments? Uh, I mean, a lot of people think, you know, a guitar is a guitar is a guitar. I mean, it has six mm -mm. strings, a body, I mean, but. I think that, you know, I just, it's funny, because earlier before we started, I said um, something about how Gibsons are a little too mid-rangey for me, and then I was like, except that one. And really, <laughs> I the thing is, I think that certain guitar brands, certain companies have things that are pretty commonly the case. Like Martins are usually pretty well balanced between low, mid, and high. Uh, whereas, you know, the Taylors are famous for being really, really bright and really, really scooped. Both of the Taylors I own, they're not like that. And then mid, and then Gibsons, a lot of Gibsons are kind of mid-rangey, kind of like round in the middle. And that's why I guess I've heard that's why people use them for country a lot. Um, there's just something kind of warm Mm -hmm. But to me, it always feels a little too honky. Mm -hmm. And maybe honky's good for country, you know what I mean? Like, and, but it's not every Gibson, because there's a Gibson sitting right there that is, is brighter. So anyway, back to this guitar. Um, and, and Martins. We, t we were talking about Martins. Right. I, I, don't, I don't know that you can take any guitar and say, this company always does this well. Right. But I guess when I think about mm -hmm. it from playing them, Martins are usually pretty warm and well-balanced, mm -hmm. not too bright. Do you think... Do you feel like it might have a signature sound to it? I mean, does it sound like Martin-like to you? Um, I mean, it sounds it... like a really good Martin, I yeah. guess, but <laughs> uh, yeah, I, mm -hmm. I, I, I think so. Um, it sounds like a really good Martin, but it I wouldn't say that Martins sound like this. Right. This sounds better mm -hmm. than the Martin you find yeah. anyway. But oh my God, 1938. I yeah. Mean, can we believe that? Well, that's that? the thing, that's you know, like I have a... Do you ever think about, like, who held this, who played it, and here it is, like, over 80 years old, later, and you're holding this guitar. Right. It's like... and, and, and there is a thing about wood and age, and I don't know the details of why, but, mm -hmm. you know, um, I've never played a new guitar that sounds like a guitar that's even 20 years old, mm -hmm. you know? Guitars from the 80s and 90s. I mean, I've played a Washburn from the 80s or 90s mm -hmm. that's probably 80s. That sounds better than, uh, you know, a Taylor off the shelf. Mm -hmm. Even though that guitar mm -hmm. was a hundred bucks yeah, when it yeah. was new, you know. Right. Um, yeah. And my my violin's one hundred and ten years old, you know, for a reason. It, it just it, something about when wood ages just yeah, sounds better. Right. When you were listening to it, is there a characteristic that captivated you, or captured you, or um, you, you felt like? Wow, is this is different. Awesome, a characteristic. Mm -hmm. Like I don't like, I don't know exactly how to answer that. It's it's um, it's got plenty of brightness, but it doesn't have any ugly sizzle. It's mm -hmm. super warm without anything blooming in the low end, mm -hmm. um, and the mids are present and beautiful without uh, taking over or. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Mm -hmm. It's just, yeah. it's literally my favorite 
sounding guitar that I've ever played. It's amazing. Aaron, thank you so much for uh, giving us your time to be here to of do course. this and uh, play this amazing instrument. Thank you so much yeah. for having me and for I letting love me. Playing music with it's an honor, too. yeah. We've done a chance to do some work together. And yep. In fact, you produced my CD for me, a this couple is true. of them. So yeah. thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You can't have it. I. <laughs> Hey, thanks for tuning in to this episode of Vintage Guitar Legacies. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe, follow, and like all of our social media pages. See you next time.